All right, well, good Sunday morning to you all. I'm headed back out for work today. Didn't get a break this weekend. I've got too much uh, work stacked up. So I'm doing another one of my uh, work commutes on uh, another one of my fire-breathing uh, super-fast beasts. Uh, it's going to be the C3 today. <laughs> I haven't had this thing out to run it around the neighborhood or go shopping on it or anything for a while, so I figure, you know, it's a Sunday morning. Traffic's going to be pretty light, and I'm going to take this thing for my work commute uh, down to the Memorial Park area. So let's uh, fire this uh, crazy fire-breathing machine up to life here. Ooh, purr, purr, purr. It hasn't been started in a couple of months. That's that's how it starts. Just beep, done. All right, I'm gonna stop and get fuel in this guy. I checked the tire pressures uh, a few minutes ago, and they haven't lost a pound. It's amazing. I've got uh, ride-on tire sealant in these things, and that stuff also helps to make the uh, tire carcass a little less porous, so it uh, holds air a little better. If I let this thing sit for six months, it might lose a pound, half a pound. So I've mentioned this scoot a couple times in my uh, other scooter uh, rides, even the, uh, the Super Cub ride. And I was saying that I don't particularly uh, like taking this thing for my, my normal commutes because it's just not fast enough top end uh, acceleration up to 25 is pretty good but above 25 it tapers off and then it'll just slowly climb to 40 ish uh, like 45 47 i think is what i've gotten on it on gps we'll see today i'll do a top speed run on the c3 <laughs> and it is measured in minutes not seconds um but uh yeah it just doesn't have enough acceleration and top speed for houston traffic uh, if you're staying somewhere on closer surface streets, it wouldn't be bad, but uh, 50cc scooters don't really have a place uh, in Texas uh, for the majority of places anyway, because they're just not fast enough. Traffic moves too quick. So here's wide open. Yeah, it's accelerating okay for a 50cc. You can't expect too much out of it. It's low on fuel though, so I'll go ahead and fill it up. It takes a whopping one gallon of fuel, just like the uh, Super Cub. And it gets what used to be really good gas mileage by comparison, but now uh, the Super Cub is definitely kicking its butt. Um, it gets 120-ish, uh, uh, so the, ooh, hey, uh, the, uh, the Super Cub, because it's got a chain final drive and less uh, driveline losses, it's just much more efficient. Okay. Let me get this out in the light here. I'll show one of my hacks. Get my gloves off. I don't know why I fully geared up. It's not like I'm going fast enough. I can almost run fast as this thing. Okay. Uh, I got this uh, Shad tunnel bag, and I was trying to figure out a way to put it on. It came with... Uh, like adhesive Velcro straps, and I didn't like the look of that. So what I did is I modified uh, the existing straps in two or three places, and I used uh, guitar strap uh, disconnects. They threaded right through. I put some thread lock on that, and they work like a champ. That one's getting a little rusty inside, but eh, oh well. So I just got those in four places. This one's a bear. Let's see if I can keep you on camera. I need to lube this one up because it's getting very hard to get off of there. There we go. So I got four of those on there, and uh, they work a treat. Makes a nice little uh, quick detach mechanism. And then I got one on the front. So the whole bag comes off. It just covers that center tunnel there. Unfortunately, I have to undo it for each uh, fill up, but that's okay. And this one hasn't been run in a long time, so I'm going to go ahead and put uh, unleaded premium in it. Super. It does have a high enough compression motor on it that it can make use of uh, higher octane fuel. I don't know if it has a uh, knock sensor or any of that, but I've noticed it gets slightly better fuel economy when I'm running super in it.
this scooter has an interesting history for me, how I purchased it. I'll talk about that on the ride, but uh, let's just say I got it dirt cheap. It only had uh, 300 miles on it, uh, and it had sat in somebody's garage for too long, and they couldn't get it started. 279. We'll go ahead and overfill this time. Oh, there we go. Good enough. Now, 282, that's going to have to be it. Can he put a little more? Can he put a little more? Over the bar. One more penny. All right, look at that one gallon exactly. That's what I was shooting for. Ooh, it's hot this morning. Whew. Sweating, sweating, sweating. Super humid. It's already mid 80s. Gonna get moving. Okay. Off we go. <laughs> no trip meters or anything on this. It's just as analog as you can get, minus the fuel injection. Ooh, I am sweating through this helmet. Hurry, people, I'm melting. Okay, so the story on this scoot was I found it on uh, Craigslist from a guy in San Antonio, and he had purchased it new back in 2007 or 2008. Uh, he lived on a uh, golf course. So he got this instead of a golf cart to go back and forth to the clubhouse. And he used it for a little while uh, and then it just kind of fell into uh, non-use and sat in the garage. It sat there for probably I don't know, he said three or four years, and then he decided, yeah, I'm going to sell it and go ahead and get a golf cart. Well, he couldn't get it started. He thought he could get it started, but he didn't realize that when he made the ad. Uh, he put a new battery in it and tried to fire it up, and it just wasn't working right. Anyway, he had advertised it for a 1000 bucks, and it only had 300 miles on it, 302, I think. And... Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I contacted him. I said, hey, I'm going to be coming to San Antonio for business anyway. It was, you know, like the following day. And uh, I'd like to take a look at it. And if it works out okay, then I'll just take it off your hands and use it for my uh, travel trailer. And uh, I got there, looked at it, and it would not start. Uh, we couldn't get it to start any old way, shape, or how. And I told him, you know, well, I've got enough projects in my garage. I don't really need another project, so I'm going to have to pass on it. And he was just desperate to get rid of it so he could make the room to get a golf cart. And he said, well, make me an offer. And I said, nah, just tell me how much you want. And he said, well, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, how's, he said, how's $700? And I said, I don't know. Like I said, I don't need another project. So, uh, I don't know, I'll give you 300 bucks. And he said, okay, sold, take it. <laughs> so I got a basically brand new Yamaha C3 scooter with only 300 miles on it for $300. 300, 300, gotta love it. Uh, and I knew what was wrong with it. I just didn't know how long it was gonna take to sort it out. And it was uh, gelled up fuel. Uh, it just wasn't getting through the fuel pump. This um, It just wasn't getting through the fuel pump. It was too thick. So I hauled it home and uh, drained the tank out of it, drained the fuel out, and uh, threw a little bit of uh, carburetor cleaner in there, sloshed it around, got rid of it, pulled the fuel lines, blew them out with uh, carb cleaner, and then I threw some fresh fuel in it, boom, started right up. Didn't even turn over one full rotation and it lit right up. So it was an easy fix, just took a little bit of uh, a little bit of labor to get there, you know, how to pull the lower floor pan and get the tank out of it. But that's the story on this guy, and then I've had it now for, I don't know, five years, whatever. I got it originally for my son to play around with uh, and for us to use on our travel trailer. And I used it, actually, uh, as a daily commuter for a couple of weeks just to see if it could be done. And it can be done, but... <laughs> it obviously has its limitations. It's not going to go very fast. Once you get used to the idea you're not going fast, then it's okay. Just uh, dodging the cars is the trick. 
so when we uh, pulled it apart, uh, my son and I did a bunch of upgrades on it and, you know, kind of snazzed it up a little bit for him to put around the neighborhood and have fun with. Uh, put fresh tires on it, fresh brakes, because uh, the rear ones had gotten a little bit smarmy. Uh, had some water in them or something, so they were a little rusted up. Um, then uh, we put some lighting on it. We put some under lighting under the floorboards. Uh, I put this little stubby uh, tombstone windscreen on here, and it does help break up the wind on the chest a lot. Uh, this thing doesn't go fast enough to make you feel like you need to hang on, but uh, the pressure on the chest is annoying after a while, so this is a good uh, aesthetics touch, and it also uh, helps break up the chest pressure, so that's good. And then I put a, uh, I made a custom mount, uh, it's too hard to see right now, but I made a custom mount for this little tack hour meter, and it is a cheapie from Amazon or wherever, and it cost, I don't know, 25 bucks or something, and it worked for maybe you know, two weeks, <laughs> and it went up, it died, so one of these days I'll get in there and get a, a better gauge or another one of the same that hopefully is uh, functional and put it back in there. I think that was about it. Oh, I put the hand guards on it. Um, I put uh, the little RAM ball mount right here for the phone. I just took that mount off because I didn't uh, didn't need it. What else? Tunnel bag. Oh, I replaced the uh, the seat cover top plastic and the left side panel because they were scratched up from being in this guy's garage. I ordered them, uh, I believe it was straight out of Japan if I remember right. And you know, it took a few weeks to get them, but they were cheap. I think I paid maybe a hundred bucks for all the plastics. And that was it. That's the only other thing we did after the fact was I uh, de-restricted the variator by removing the spacer washer. And I got uh, a whole new uh, variator. I got a Dr. Pulley variator kit for it. So it's the sliders and uh, uh, both the uh, both pieces of the variator. You got the, the front plate, the variable uh, pulley, and then you've got the, the slider cage, whatever you want to call it. They call it the driven face and the variator housing, something like that. So it's had a few mods, but nothing extensive. Mechanically, it's pretty much stock. There's no uh, custom exhaust or crazy stuff on it. But it'll get 120 plus miles to the gallon all day long and you know it's just super lightweight and flickable and it's so flickable you can end up toppling yourself end over end if you're not careful <laughs> it's, woo. okay here's wide open <laughs> go 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 we can make 40 by the stop sign come on come on go go indicated anyway GPS will tell us what that was okay brakes are pretty good on this thing they're not great they're drum brakes front and rear uh, so you're not gonna win any stopping awards but uh, they do okay so I'll just tool it along on the side roads and away we go the last time I rode this was from the warehouse back to my place and uh, I uh, raced a Ferrari. I beat a Ferrari. <laughs> Guy was sitting still at a traffic light, and I blew by him, and I looked back at him, and we made eye contact, and he realized that he was sitting on a green light. And then, of course, he proceeds to smoke the tires and go blasting down the access road at 150 plus. Yeah, that was real smart, but you know, he couldn't he couldn't tolerate to be beat by a scooter. <laughs> I was uh, I thought I was recording that whole event, but the GoPro uh, audio bug got me audio and recording bug it just didn't work it was flashing looked like it was recording i went to turn it off and there was nothing there nobody home so i am wide open as far as it goes and you can see it's it wraps the speedometer no problem and then i've got my handy dandy uh friction lock there your right hands free you know this one you can really steer with your feet and you know, just push on the floorboard a little bit and, I've actually ridden it on the back road, country highways, just like this with my hands on my knees for uh, 30, 45 miles. 
never had to stop, never had any reason to steer or turn, just, you know, dum -da -dum -da -dum. and that's all good until something jumps out in front of you. Woo. I can't count the number of times that people have uh, stopped me in traffic, uh, you know, asked when we're sitting at red lights and whatnot, if this is a cooler on wheels. They think it's one of those uh, Coleman coolers that's been converted. Kind of looks like one. And this one I wouldn't dare take up on the highway. Maybe if traffic is totally stopped and congested, I might think about doing it on and off, but nah. Just not fast enough. Another interesting uh, tidbit of trivia about this particular scooter, the motor in particular, uh, Shell Oil has their eco-marathons that they host every year, and for a long time, this engine, this driveline, was a popular power plant for those uh, high-efficiency eco-marathon uh, vehicles. They would get in and they would modify them a bit. I don't know if they were changing the fuel injection or what the uh, what the extent of the modifications were, but they were able to get two or three hundred miles to the gallon out of uh, the cars that were powered with this little motor. And they would do uh, start stop on the motor. They would run it up and get you know moving. 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, whatever it was, and then coast down, and then start up, and, you know, go up, down, up, down, like that. Uh, and I might be off on my numbers. It may have been considerably higher than that. Uh, I thought that was neat, though. Right when I got this, I was doing research, and uh, I stumbled across, uh, I don't remember if it was Facebook or one of the forum threads where they were talking about uh, the group that used these scooters, and they said that if you need any C3 parts, contact these guys because they've got a ton of spare parts laying around the, their shop, motors, everything, uh, where they had bought these things just to pirate them for parts. The motor was really ahead of its time for 2006, I think, when it was developed. 2007 was when this was put out. It's a three-valve, fuel-injected. Uh, it's got all the fancy coatings and stuff, ceramics and whatnot inside the motor and uh, very high efficiency. I have no idea what the horsepower output is and I'm not stopping, sorry. Um, I think it puts out like three or four horsepower, it's not much, it's just a 50cc. But the uh, Yamaha went on to use this same motor in the Vino and one other scooter if I remember right might still be used today. Oh yeah, it was the Zuma 50. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still in the same incarnation in the Zuma or not, but it's a pretty good little engine design. And apparently they're about as bulletproof as it gets. Change the oil, make sure they don't run out of uh, water. It is water cooled. I'll get over now since there are no more intersections. Got impatient people in cars doing 75 on the access road and a 45. I'm going the speed limit. I don't know about them. I haven't ever lived in another city where people bed, you know, just crazy speeds way, way over the limit uh, as much as Houston. And I guess, you know, when you're when you're in an environment, you do what everybody else does, so I've gotten accustomed to driving pretty fast too, but when you stop and look at the speed limit and then realize how fast people are going way beyond that, I just don't know of any other city that I've ever lived in, and I've lived in a few. Uh, nobody speeds that bad in other cities. Usually there are plenty of cops around to keep that in check. If you feel like donating to the city fund, then you're going to be uh, ripe for the picking. But here, I mean, even the school buses go 10 to 15 miles an hour over the limit. It's crazy. Everybody speeds. It's just bizarre. Emergency vehicles when they're not running code. Cops all day long whether they're running code or not. Everybody speeds.
And if you don't speed, people are annoyed at you. They get pissed off, get right up on you, tailgate you within just a few inches. You're in their way. <laughs> okay. Okay, wide open throttle. Here we go. It's a little bit of an uphill run here, but still fairly flat. Almost at max speed, 41.2. I haven't ever looked at the uh, deviation on the speedometer. I guess this will be a good test, assuming the GoPro is recording and the GPS is working. I need to take this thing out scamping again. I've done that a couple times. Uh, just throw a, a small tent or a hammock gear and basic necessities. I can fit everything under the seat. Don't need a backpack, don't need a bag. I do put a couple things in that tunnel bag, but uh, all the camp accessories can stay under the seat and nothing's visible. And I'll go out for two or three days. And I'm kind of staying with cars on their acceleration curve for the most part, as long as they're not very determined. But as soon as you get up to 30-ish, you know, it falls off. So, uh, thinking about the scooter cannonball run for next year, there are people that have taken these things cross-country. I don't know if they finished or not. I've not uh, researched through the uh, statistics to find out if they uh, actually placed or finished, but uh, the handicap on this thing is pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, people have actually taken these little Yamaha C3s coast-to-coast -coast through the mountains. Uh, everywhere on that uh, cannonball run. It's crazy. There was a guy in Europe that was touring one of these all over Europe, and he did extensive modifications to his. And uh, I haven't seen any posts on YouTube from him lately, but uh, I wonder how he made out with all of this stuff. You can kind of see the uh, reflection of the lights in the back of that forerunner in front of me. Uh, I've got an LED uh, main headlight in here and then the two Denali DM, the micro driving lights. They really add to the uh, conspicuity on the front end. You can see it a lot better because this headlight is so low on the front end anyway. You need all the help you can get. A vending machine for cars. Zeros. That's a great place. Can you do a no-footer? Can you do a no-footer? Yep, 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 yep. Low speed balance on this thing's pretty good because it's got those real fat tires and uh, very low center of gravity. So every acceleration run on the... Uh, C3 is a wide open acceleration run. <laughs> you just open it up and let it go because if you don't, you're not really going anywhere. That's the thing about these uh, small scooters, 50cc, I would say probably even up to you know 100cc scooters. They live their life at wide open throttle. You know, it's either wide open or nothing. Once you get up to max speed, you back out of it, you know, if you're in a, a speed zone or something like that. But for the most part, they live their life at wide open. Well, there was a dedicated bicyclist. He had panniers and stuff on his back rack and everything. Ugh, I don't know if I could do that in Houston heat. I do like riding road bikes, but I get out on the country roads uh, where there's less traffic and at least you're moving. But in town, man, you're always stopping. You're always having to start cranking again. The heat and the exertion would just be crazy. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, I was reading comments. I haven't had a chance to reply to comments in a couple of days because I've been busy working, but uh, somebody asked uh, on or replied in one of my cub videos asking how I deal with the heat and sweating and things like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to draft a full response for that one because, buddy, I feel you. Um, I am a hot-natured guy. Uh, all of my ancestors are cold climate people, you know, Dutch, German, Irish, so uh, we're not built for the, the heat. And I will break a sweat if I get off the sofa to go to the refrigerator for a beer. And uh, Houston heat is just something else. So I manage it with a couple of different layers of clothing. Uh, I always wear an undershirt, and that kind of takes care of the the sticky, sweaty shirt, you know, glued to you kind of thing. Uh, and then, you know, a mesh jacket to help keep the sun off of you, uh, as well as abrasion resistance and everything else. But the, the sun block is the big deal. And then... Uh, the uh, the real kicker, especially for my long road trips, is I wear merino wool socks. I, uh, I use darn tough socks, and those things are just fantastic. Uh, they keep the sweat and perspiration to a minimum, and they don't stink. Uh, and then beyond that, I use uh, Gold Bond body powder, the medicated powder. That stuff is awesome. Keeps you dry, keeps you from stinking. Uh, you just put that in your shorts and down in your boots or your socks or whatever and you're golden now it doesn't keep you from sweating but <laughs> it keeps you from stinking and sticking to everything and then of course for the really long trips uh for the motorcycle seat especially you know when it's left sitting out in the sun and gets really hot uh, i have those air hawk pads and uh even when they're sitting in the sun they don't get too hot because it's uh nylon fabric and it's got a open weave like a honeycomb weave and it cools off real fast there's always airflow under it uh and through it so you don't get the sweaty legs and monkey butt syndrome uh, and if you've never had monkey butt trust me you don't want it uh, it's a, a heat rash that you can get from you know heat and perspiration and lack of uh airflow and everything because these vinyl seats don't let your skin breathe Anywho, I am here. I'm going to eat breakfast. Oh, and here's the side stand for the, the C3 I was talking about. I put got ordered that from Japan, put it on there, and it's just fantabulous. It makes it so nice. You just, you know, it kills the ignition for you. Anyway. All right. Breakfast is done. I'm not hungry anymore. And now we go off to work. It's going to be another full day. Probably get done about six or seven tonight again. We'll see how it goes. Ugh.